Cam. Let's bring him in. One of our favorites now, the great Lomas Brown Lions radio analyst, former Lions great on Twitter at Lomas Brown 75. Lomas! Lomas, how are you, my friend? I'm great, man. I'm great, man. Happy holidays to you guys at Woodward Sports. Happy holidays. Thanks so much, Lomas. Lomas. Happy holidays to you and, and a little bit of a holiday gift for us all. Uh, an incredible turnaround for the Detroit Lions. Uh, Lomas, what has changed over the last five weeks to put the Lions on the brink of uh, playing these important games in December? Yeah, I think the one thing is that these guys are getting healthy at the right time. I, I, I think that's been a big problem uh, with the team all year long, the availability of these guys. Um, as you know, you don't get an opportunity to practice with guys. You don't get an opportunity to get that chemistry um, together when you're not there, when you're not able to practice together. So it's been important for those guys to get healthy, and you can kind of see them getting healthy each and every week. Hopefully that'll continue to happen. And it just seems like these guys now, they kind of understand what the coaching staff wants out of these guys. Uh, the communication seems to be better between the coaching staff and the players. So it's been a collaborative effort for this team to get itself where it is right now. And it's, it's very exciting. It's, it's very exciting to be at this point, point of the year and the Lions to be in the playoff hunt right now. Uh, Lomas, I went back yesterday. We were talking about this. In the last decade alone, there might be, might be 10 games that meant anything at Ford Field in December. The crowd will be electric on uh, Sunday. How much of a playoff atmosphere do you think this is going to be at Ford Field on Sunday? Oh, it's going to be huge. I, I could tell because of how Thanksgiving was. Oh, my God. I know Thanksgiving is a tradition, but the, the fans were ready. They came out ready. They showed up and showed out uh, last Thursday. So I expect more of the same with an opponent that's a divisional opponent, but a guy that everybody that watched the first game know that the Lions gave that away. We gave that game to Minnesota up there in Minneapolis. So I just think the way the team has gotten better, I just think the crowd is going to be ready. They're expecting. I mean, heck, we're two-point favorites. I mean, I don't know when the last time you could say the Lions – have been favorites at home. So I know the crowd is going to be ready, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that game. Hey, Lo, it's Maz. Uh, thanks for coming on. We love you, man. Hey, uh, just a little stat on that. Uh, the Lions are favored. It's the first time a five-win team is favored over a 10-win team in the Super Bowl era. How about that for, for something? That's a long time, man. That is. You were right about that. And it's a long time coming. You know, hopefully the team can show everybody that they have a ride. I mean, you know, we haven't fared well in big games like this, games that mean much. So hopefully the guys will be ready for this challenge. And I do think from watching Minnesota on film, they're a team that's going to give you opportunities. The Lions are just going to have to take advantage of those opportunities that Minnesota's going to give them on Sunday and be ready to capitalize on them. So hopefully that's the case on Sunday. But I do think that us being at home, us being in front of our home crowd, that has to be an extra boost for these players uh, and this coaching staff. Hey, uh, you've had a lot of quarterbacks you've worked with in your long career. You're going to go to Hall of Fame here one of these days. Jared Goff, uh, he spoke the other day to the media, and he said, this is the best uh, football I've played in my career and he credits Ben Johnson on bringing it out of him and you saw last week at the end of the game he went and he gave bear, a big bear hug from behind on Ben Johnson you could tell they have a good thing going together what do, what do you see different now in this Jared Goff confidence that's it I mean you, you'll be shocked at how much a confidence can do for a player in this game and that's what I see. I, man, that last game, man, Jarrett was stepping into the throws with no conviction. 
He knew where he wanted to go with the ball, and he got the ball there, and that's a confident player. You can tell every time Jared is in there, man, he has just this calm demeanor about himself. And as a lineman, as a, a guy on the offensive side of the ball, you follow that. That's how you want your leader to be. You don't want him to be too up. You don't want him to get too down. You want him to be a steady and force. And that's what I see out of Jerry each and every every game. You don't know how the game is going when you look at Jared's expression. You don't know whether they win or lose him because of how he stays. And I think that's a good trait for him to have. So I'm definitely looking forward to him putting his, his, uh, his best foot forward and really, really giving us a Jared Golf performance that we haven't gotten this year yet. I'm still waiting for that signature performance from Jared Goff. Lo, I'm going to make you uh, go back in time here to the 90s for a minute. You had you had uh, Eric Kramer, you had Scott Mitchell, and now you see Jared Goff. Is, do, you, do you see any similarities between those three guys? Well, again, that's how, that's how uh, Eric Kramer was. Eric was the same way as far as his demeanor. Eric was the same exact way. He wouldn't get too high. He wouldn't get too low. So he had that calm and demeanor in the huddle. And, you know, he had a very, very good understanding of our playbook, our philosophy. And I think that's what you see with Jared Goff, too, right now with him and Ben Johnson. Just like you say, how he gave Ben that big bear hug. You can tell they're on the same page. And there's no better feeling than to be on the same page with your coach and being able to share ideas with him, share plays that you think that'll be good plays to run. You know, that's just having a great relationship with your co coach. And you can just see that Jared, Ben Johnson, they have that type of relationship that they have built. Lomas, uh, question, Lindsay here. How you doing, big guy? I'm good, Lindsay. What's up, my brother? How are you? <laughs> What's up? Good. <laughs> hey, on the on the outside looking in, we can see by when by see the wins that there's been a change. But being around the team, when did you feel the culture shift? When, I know Dan Campbell had to get his guys, some of his guys in there, but inside, when did you kind of feel the culture shift within the team? You know, you know, Lindsay, they still doing it right now, but I would say probably happened. I would say probably about five games ago probably is when I really seen that the team was really trying to buy in, really trying to do what Coach Campbell, that coaching staff was trying to get them to do. I would say probably about then. I hate to say it's kind of about the same time when Aubrey Pleasance, when they made the move with Ar Aubrey Pleasance. But you can just see it. And, Lindsay, I'm telling you, another thing that's going on is that these young guys, these rookies, these second-year guys that we're playing, you can tell now the game is starting to slow, slow up down. for these guys. Yep. Yeah, they're really starting to get it a lot more. You can tell it's slowing down for these guys, and you can see that they're performing good. And the great thing about this, all this experience they get at a young age is just going to help them throughout their career. So. It's, it's some good things happening with the, this team and this coaching staff. Hey, Lomas, I wanted to ask you, because you, you can't talk about this last five weeks and not mention Aaron Glenn in the defense. Uh, in the first seven games, this defense gave up over 32 points a game in their last five, 19.8 points a game. What changed with them? I mean, these guys are getting better, all of them defensively. I mean, the younger guys especially. Yeah, so, hey, they were shooting themselves in the foot. It was too many self-inflicted wounds that the Lions were doing to themselves with penalties, uh, missed assignments, uh, you know, turnovers. Those are all things that hurt you, that kill drives, uh, that, that do things that are detriment to your team and to where you're trying to go. And that's what the Lions were doing. You know, they would have costly penalties, pass interference penalties, late hits, different things like that that would hurt them, that would put the opposing offense in a position to have success against them. And then, of course, you look at the offensive side of the ball, 
we had turnovers early in the year. And anytime our offense turns the ball over and put their deep, give their defense a short field, I'm sorry, their offense a short field to work with, that's going to put a lot of stress on your defense. So I think these guys have cleaned up a lot of things that they were doing wrong early in the season. And I'm telling you, these guys are playing hard. They're swarming to the ball. So these are all things that good defenses do. You can see the Lions defense starting to do it now. Last one for you, Lomas. Uh, I mentioned it earlier this week. Dan Orlovsky said it this week on the ESPN Live, NFL Live. Thinks the Lions are going to win out. What, what do you put? What, what, what do you what do you make of of that sort of? Not going to ask you whether or not they're going to win out. They certainly could. They certainly could. Anything could happen. But what about that respect that's being put on the Detroit Lions name? I mean, I'm, I'm happy about it. I really am. I, I and I, I, it's a testimony to what those guys have done you know, have put themselves in a position starting off. You see how bad we started this year off. It was terrible. But these guys have fought and they have put themselves in a position to where they are in the playoff hunt. Now, the thing I have to say about the, the running the table is, you know all those other teams are looking at the Lions the same way. they looking at the Lions like, look, we could beat Detroit and we could do this and we could do that. So just like Detroit are looking at Detroit is looking at all these teams they think they can beat, those teams are looking at Detroit saying, hey, we could beat Detroit and get our season back on track. So that's the thing. We're going to have to be ready to fight force with force because these teams aren't going to just roll over just because we roll our helmets out there. We're going <laughs> to be have to be ready to fight these teams, and hopefully the guys will be ready on Sunday to do that. We'll be listening to the call on Lions Radio Network. Lomas Brown, Dan Miller, thanks so much, Lomas. Thanks, it's amazing. Hey, thanks, thanks Lomas. Hey, real fast, I got I got to tell my guy Lindsey, man, Rick Mahorn out here trying to threaten me, Lindsey. He's talking about what he, he, talking about what he would have did to me on the football field. I told Rick I would have broke him up on the football field. He better stay on that hard court. He stay on that hard court and leave turf alone. He's not ready for that. Trust me. He ain't ready he for that. Ready for it, <laughs> no. He ain't ready for it. Just put, oh, just put a sock Lomas. in his mouth. It's better than Lomas Brown, Lomas. man. Nobody. Just, just put a sock Lomas. in his mouth, Lomas. Oh, my God. <laughs>